Hi, I'm Mike Carper, WA9PIE, and I'm going to walk through the initial setup of Ham Radio Deluxe in this video. In this video, I'll be using Windows 7. The first thing we're going to do is go out to the Ham Radio Deluxe website and download the software. Going into Downloads and just get the most recent version. Okay, we have that downloaded in the downloads folder so we'll launch it from there and the first thing that is required for ham radio deluxe because it's developed in visual studio 2010 is the visual studio 2010 redistributable package has to be installed from from microsoft so we're going to include that if it's already installed in your computer it won't prompt you for that all right, now we're going to accept the terms of the license agreement and just accept the rest of the options here and let it go ahead and run the install routine. And then we can launch it at the end of the install. One of the things I recommend is when you're installing for the first time, try to get all the software installed, configured with your unique call sign and location information before you try to get a radio connected. And you can do that by using one of the demo radios that I'll demonstrate here in a moment. So we'll click next there and we're going to put in our call sign or my call sign. And then we need the activation key that um, you would have received in an email. And then once you have your license key installed, you'll get a screen that looks like this and you're all good to go. So we're going to click continue. and. As I said before, I recommend that you avoid trying to connect your radio initially. The best way to do that is pick a Demomatic radio. Just the demo radio with the FT2000 is fine. We're going to click continue. That gives us a screen that looks like a radio. And then um, I'm going to go first into um, logbook. I've got some choices here. The first has to do with how the list of EQSL users is updated in logbook. We've got four choices there. I highly recommend that you always download the membership and just never bother with showing the window. This just kind of sets it to happen automatically and kind of gets it out of your hair. Okay, so thus far we've got the software installed. I'm going to go ahead and launch Digital Master. Okay. So just to start with those three, we'll kind of leave it where it is. I'm going to go back into Logbook. And under Tools, Configure, I'm going to first configure my station. So in this box, you're going to put in all the information about your name, address, information about where you live, uh, your grid, maybe your some of your equipment and things of that nature. So I'm going to go ahead and complete this. Okay, so I went ahead and paused it and copied in all my information here. thing to keep in mind is, is that uh, SIG stands for Special Interest Group. So I have a, a, a ham radio club I belong to. I have the locator that I put in, my longitude and latitude, CQ zones. Remember to put your country in over here. And if you have a website, you can set this up your email address and so on. So all of this is all set up and once I'm done with that I can just close this box. Now I'll go over into DM780 and do the same. Under program options you can see that it already picked up some of the information that was available in logbook. So I'm going to put in some additional information here. And then I could put in my radio. Put in an antenna. And so on. So that should complete everything. I've got everything kind of configured. So I'm going to go back over to Logbook. One of the things that you'll want to do is configure your cluster options. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 
and you want to make sure that you have your call sign in here it's already picked up some of these things if you use the system ID and I'm going to use one here then you want to change this here I think everything's good to go here I can say I want to connect on startup or not um, one of the things to look at here is whether or not you want your workstation indicators to be set up for um, just QSL cards which is the first option for um, EQSL or for logbook of the world I'm going to uncheck the EQSL option and the layout by default is just fine for what we're doing right now but later on you can add additional fields in the um, in the cluster window down here so you can see more information and I'm in region 2 which is US and uh, because I'm connecting to a spider cluster or will I want to make use of the filters that come with spider cluster so I'm going to um, use the command show my DX which is the filter version of show DX which is pretty important and for the rest of it I want to say most of these are okay I'm going to come down to QSL members and you can see that both the EQSL and Logbook of the World membership is being updated within HRD automatically. So I'm going to select a cluster and I'm going to come down here and select my own cluster here. Um, it'll log me in and then I'll have an opportunity to see all the spots that are coming from the cluster here. Let's configure the lookup options also. So under call sign lookup, by default, your logbook is part of the lookup, as well as the country list is part of the lookup. I might want to say, well, okay, I'm a QRZ.com subscriber as well, so I'm going to pop that over, and I want it to be the first thing that gets considered in the lookup. If you've got these other sources of information, you can put those over as well. Here's where you would put your username and password for QRZ, so I'm going to do that. This all looks fine. So I'm going to accept that. And now I can see that uh, I've got some DX spots here. And I'm going to hide this audio recording thing. I can do this by clicking the auto hide. And I want to see the lookup pane. So when I click a spot over here, it will automatically go and look it up off of, H off of QRZ, put it over here in the lookup pane. Since I only have one log database, I also want to hide this. And let's say, for example, that uh, I want to work this station. I can click the logbook button and you know go ahead and exchange my uh, information with them. Add, and then uh, you can see that it's already in my log. So maybe I want to add in another uh, QSL, like W1AW. So once I put in the call sign here, I have to hit tab. Upon hitting tab, it'll do a lookup. Brings back the, all the information from QRZ.com. I can add here. Say, for example, I put in a call sign that is not recognized in QRZ.com. Say I put in W3Quebec. So there's no lookup information for W3 Quebec. And let's say, for example, that I know this is, uh, for whatever reason, in Puerto Rico. I'll find Puerto Rico here. And good. So now I've got that QSO showing here. One of the things to understand about the call sign lookup is, is that because I have used the call sign lookup as one of the, uh, or the, the logbook lookup. Um, I'll be able to reuse that information. I'm going to just go ahead and put it up at the top. That way when I want to work at that station again, and I put in W3 Quebec, it automatically knows that there's a previous logbook entry in my log for, for that station that says Puerto Rico. It also recognizes that the country list and QRZ think it's not Puerto Rico, but at least it gives me the choice I can select that and I could add another uh, QSO with that call in my log. Okay, another thing I may want to do 
And if I'm a logbook of the world user, I may want to download my logbook of the world information or in some cases upload it. If I uh, click on one of these entries, Control A highlights them all. I could click upload. I'm not going to do that. But if I want to download my contacts from Logbook of the World, I click download. First thing that comes up right away is that I, I, I found that the first thing that, that's apparent is I need to download and install QRZ. The first thing I need to do, however, is exit out of this, go and download the software from ARRL, the TQSL software. And I can do that by coming to this site, TQSL, and I'll hit the download. And I'm going to select run. Okay, I'm going to say that's done. But the purpose of this video is not to show you how to set up TQS other instructions for that on the ARRL site. But when you click on upload, it's going to ask you to find the location where those files are installed. So it's on the C drive under program files and it's under trusted QSL. And you would click this, select open, and then that's all done. The other thing you have to make sure that you do is put a location in um, in this field. It has to match the one that's in your um, logbook of the world information. You have to put in a username and password. And then once you've done that, you're ready to upload those contacts. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to upload these contacts, but this is these are the things you need to do to configure this. A few other things that's worth pointing out within logbook is that there's a, a pane here called favorites. This is like memory channels for your radio. You can add things in and you can see that the radio is tuned to 14235. If I want to change that to one of these favorites, I can double click this. It'll change the radio's uh, frequency. I can change these frequencies just by double clicking and selecting, uh, selecting them here. Look up pane uh, shows you information about the particular call sign that you looked up. The details from QRZ or the lookup sources go here. If you click this right here, it will open up in the browser some Atlas information about that location. If you have Google Earth installed, clicking this, uh, the coordinates will take you to the Google Earth location for that call sign. Clicking on the uh, tack buttons hide those panels. So if you want to clear out some space and, and see a little bit more of your logbook, you can do that. You can always get them back by coming over here and clicking um, on the tabs themselves along the right hand side. If you'd like to see solar data, you can do that by clicking the buttons down here at the bottom. And you can get the clock and gray line back by clicking these buttons here. That concludes my demo. Thanks for joining me. I'm WA9PIE, Mike Carper, 73s. Hi, I'm Mike Carper, WA9PIE, and I'm going to walk through the initial setup of Ham Radio Deluxe in this video. In this video, I'll be using a version of Windows uh, 7. It's never had anything loaded on it. It's completely clean. Um, you can see by looking here in the start menu that nothing's been installed on it. All of the Windows updates are up to date, but it's, uh, it's otherwise just a plain um, Windows 7 build. And wanted to start with a plain Windows 7 build because I don't want um, you know 